in San Francisco. And here's what she had to say. That could mean life in prison. And cases like this can depend on the testimony of the child accuser. In general, uh, the child will be able to recall and recollect with some detail the incident. And that is persuasive to a jury, even if it is the only testimony that is available. Ooh, betting against... Michael Jackson, who was eventually acquitted of all charges. But what's really stunning is when you juxtapose this to what Donald Trump said at the time, then just a real estate magnate. Take a listen. Michael's been a longtime resident of Trump Tower. Last night, the Donald strongly reiterated his defense of Jackson with Larry King by going after the accuser's mother. She's had plenty of experience at going after people. And she goes after them viciously and violently. And I saw a story and I read another story about some of the things she's done. And I don't believe it. But you know what it's like when an indictment comes down. It's tough. It's presumption. He's t it's tough. It's tough to win. But I have a feeling he's going to win, Larry. The interesting thing is I've known Michael from many different standpoints. And Michael would spend a lot of time with my kids. I have beautiful kids. And at the time, like at Mar-a-Lago, and even in Trump Tower, the kids were very young. Michael would come, play with the kids. He just loved children. He was not a child molester. And I am certain of that. He loved children. He'd play with my son Eric and my son Donald. Now he'd just play with them forever. He loved children, but he was not a child molester. And, you know, that whole final saga of Neverland and the police and what they did was, I think, a very, very, a very, very bad part of Michael's life. Just incredible. When you really look back on that, it just makes you love Trump even more because he was always standing up to the media complex, and that's really what it was that came down on Michael Jackson. Like I said, the record execs had power, and he was fighting them, and he was winning against them. He was going to eventually control the Beatles catalog. Next thing you know, he ends up dead, and he first gets accused of being a pedophile, and his entire legacy is destroyed uh, with accusations that did not win in court. He, he, like I said, was acquitted. Go back, watch that episode that we did on him, and inform yourself on that. Um, but it's incredible to see that, and people are now replaying these clips and are feeling some type of way about Kamala Harris. And I think the majority of people just want to know, who is this woman, and who does she work for? Well, we left off on quite... Five and I am at the edge of my seat. We all are, Mr. President. This is really turning into quite the scandal, and we are on top of it. I've gone through so many emails, and it just gets crazier and crazier. Plus, is LeBron James ducking smoke from Candace Owens? Because that's what former NBA player Kwame Brown thinks, and I'm going to tell you guys why. All of that coming up right now on Candace. the media they controlled the media at that time same story it is today and why there are certain people who are protected and so at that time they were going around asking a lot of powerful people what their opinions were on the Michael Jackson case and one of those people who was asked was Kamala Harris then the deputy city attorney in San Francisco and here's what she had to say that could mean life in prison and cases like this can depend on the testimony of the child accuser in general, uh, the child will be able to recall and recollect with some detail the incident, and that is persuasive to a jury, even if it is the only testimony that is available. Ooh, betting against Michael Jackson, who was eventually acquitted of all charges. But what's really stunning is when you juxtapose this to what Donald Trump said at the time, then just a real estate magnate. Take a listen. A lot of interesting trends happening on X over the weekend, and I've come to the conclusion that maybe the ghost of Michael Jackson is haunting Kamala, because there have been some really old clips that are now surfacing, and it's essentially depicting the Kamala versus Donald Trump discussion pertaining to the Michael Jackson case. Now, I know a lot of you guys are new listeners to the show. We've gained a lot of new listeners over the last week, so in case you are like me and did not remember any details about the Michael Jackson case, all you remembered was the media telling you incessantly that he was a pedophile, I highly recommend that you go back and revisit our episode 55, which we did 
looking into the Michael Jackson case, it is stunning. Michael Jackson was without question being set up by some very powerful executives because he was fighting for uh, control over Sony. It, it's completely crazy about how the cases even came about. Literally, uh, the first person who ever made an allegation against Donald Trump was drugged into the allegation by his own father. I'm talking about that crazy and that his father eventually killed himself. It's nuts. It's nuts. Anyways, at the time that all these accusations were coming up, it was very much the media versus Michael Jackson because uh, obviously the rec record execs had a lot of power over the media. They controlled the media at that time. Same story it is today and why there are certain people who are protected. And so at that time, they were going around asking a lot of powerful people what their opinions were on the Michael Jackson case. And one of those people who was asked – was Kamala Harris, then the deputy city attorney in San Francisco. And here's what she had to say. That could mean life in prison. And cases like this can depend on the testimony of the child accuser. In general, uh, the child will be able to recall and recollect with some detail the incident. And that is persuasive to a jury, even if it is the only testimony that is available. Ooh, betting against... Michael Jackson, who was eventually acquitted of all charges. But what's really stunning is when you juxtapose this to what Donald Trump said at the time, then just a real estate magnate. Take a listen. For all of you guys who are really new to Michael Jackson's story, so Candice Owen um, did a really long video about Michael Jackson, about how the claim about him being a pedophilia came about and eventually she was he was acquitted from those charges so go to that video and see what happened in that video and where who were the key players that uh, contributed to those charges and also why did they did that why they defame him that way and who was going to benefit and what was Michael Jackson fighting against so you really can see where the issues were around that case of Michael Jackson. But the person who actually supported Michael Jackson was none other Donald Trump. Michael's been a long-time resident of Trump Tower. And last night, the Donald strongly reiterated his defense of Jackson with Larry King by going after the accuser's mother. She's had plenty of experience at going after people. And she goes after them viciously and violently. And I saw a story and I read another story about some of the things she's done. And I don't believe it. But you know what it's like when an indictment comes down. It's tough. It's presumption. He's t it's tough. It's tough to win. But I have a feeling he's going to win, Larry. The interesting thing is I've known Michael from many different standpoints. And... Michael would spend a lot of time with my kids. I have beautiful kids, and at the time, like at Mar-a-Lago, and even in Trump Tower, the kids were very young. Michael would come, play with the kids. He just loved children. He was not a child molester, and I am certain of that. He loved children. He'd play with my son Eric and my son Donald, and he'd just play with them forever. He loved children, but he was not a child molester. And, you know, that whole final saga of... Neverland and the police and what they did was, I think, a very, very, a very, very bad part of Michael's life. Just incredible. When you really look back on that, it just makes you love Trump even more because he was always standing up to the media complex. And that's really what it was that came down on Michael Jackson. Like I said, the record execs had power and he was fighting them and he was winning against them. He was going to eventually control the Beatles catalog. Next thing you know, he ends up dead. And he first gets accused of being a pedophile and his entire legacy is destroyed uh, with accusations that did not win in court. He, he, like I said, was acquitted. Go back, watch that episode that we did on him and inform yourself on that. Um, but it's incredible to see that. And people are now replaying these clips and are feeling some type of way about Kamala Harris. And I think the majority of people just want to know, who is this woman and who does she work for? Well, we left off on quite a note last weekend or at the end of last week, rather. We have received a lot of information. You guys have been emailing us incessantly. I know I'm not responding to the emails. I am reading them and going through them. I'm creating this really long timeline. I'm also trying to be careful not to overwhelm you guys with too much information because there's so many moving pieces and they all have so many names. And I've just been carefully organizing things because we have time. We have a little bit of a runway ahead of the election and I want to make sure that I get it right. 
So we left off interested in Vioris Cambridge Harris McPherson, okay? And this is a woman that we believe is Kamala's grandmother or her mother, really. <laughs> she looks so much like her. But anyways, the, her true grandmother, not Beryl, a woman who I believe looks a little too much like Kamala and has been rather conspicuously just left out of the family Jamaican heritage story. So I'm just going to show you the side-by-side -side of, of Kamala and uh, Vioris. And we then learned, because someone pointed it out to us, that actually Vioris' birth name is Iris. I can't believe I missed this. I produced the birth certificate and obviously did not read it for details. But yes, if you look at her birth certificate, again, it actually says in that second column that her birth name is Iris. Now that explains why whoever created her profile on Ancestry.com put Iris in parentheses. On that far side, it says Vioris Anita, and that's her baptismal name. As I've been going through all of these documents, I realized baptismal names are very important or were at this time because they then used them and pretended that it was their legal names on other documents. But yes, yeah, so when we see that and we go, okay, so we now have a grandma Iris, that's very interesting. We know that this woman was born in 1927 in St. Elizabeth, um, St. Elizabeth, Jamaica, and her last name was Cambridge. And I'm wondering, and I'm sure you're wondering, could she be the Miss Iris that Donald refers to so affectionately throughout his piece? He claims in that piece, by the way, that Miss Iris's ancestry is unknown to him, right? He also claims that that Iris that he mentions is his grandmother. So it would be Kamala's great grandmother and not her grandmother, which I suspect she is. And I'm going to show you the extremely black woman that we are shown a picture of, a picture that he claims he captured of Kamala sitting on Miss Iris's lap. Now, I have received, by the way, um, a note from a woman who is in her 70s who swears that uh, she knew this family and that that woman there worked for the family as we work to get in touch with her. She's a bit older. Uh, trust me, I am on it. I, I've reached out. Um, I'm going to actually place a phone call later on today to try to see if she'll pick up her phone, if she's easier uh, to connect with that way, to get to the bottom of whether or not she really does know this family. She claims that she worked for the family for so long, didn't want to leave, and that that is, in fact, a picture of the help with which would be wild, absolutely wild, if we can get somebody to confirm that. Well, we so, yeah, that would actually explain the distance, the formality of of that picture and the lack of um, that, you know, motherly, grandmotherly, you know, interaction uh, with that picture. So it explains a lot. I think there's still the theory about that woman being the servant of the family it's yeah it's highly likely versus that woman be uh the grand the true grandmother however i would caution people who are looking into that from that from today's uh world of what is meant to be a, have a grandmother and grandpa and look at from the slave era from the slave era that could be true uh, in the way if um, Kamala's grandmother was actually a victim of sexual assault and to produce more slaves uh, for that family. That can be genetically, that can be plausible, that it is indeed. Uh, so you have to interpret these things based on that history of slavery from what we know that we can infer from American records of what went what went down around slavery and the level of sexual assault for young uh, children and women, mostly women, girls, and in order to produce more slaves because the more slaves you had, you had more money and more commodity. That's why when it was abolished, uh, people were, who had slaves, they were actually given money in order to compensate for the abolishment of slaves. So if you interpret that from that context of history, you could then think, okay, this, they genetically may be linked to that, to sexual assault and through that lineage, but they were actually not actually a family, a nuclear family, where you have your mom, your dad, and your 
grand grandpa or grandma sort of things so you can look at it from that perspective as well uh, but the thing is is that what was written in both books uh, Jay Harris and Kamala Harris they presented as if that was their, actually their family this is how they grew up everything was like a nuclear type family so they hadn't actually disclosed this part of the history which I suspect is maybe could be that if this is a true grandmother it could be true that uh, sexual assault uh, of a mother and and all that stuff that went on during that time of slavery uh, genetically they may but also this family looks more Indian than they do they look black um, these pictures uh, that's another thing based on the fact um, the history that we know that that family had a lot of Hindu slaves so you can infer from that that yes she's not black she's Caucasian Indian and from that so let's listening in and then um, we will conclude um, just listen what um, Candace Owen is going to say so. do now know for a fact is that Iris Cambridge so going back to I'm gonna have to start calling them like white Iris and black Iris like just because I think it's easier for you guys to know who I'm speaking about so white Iris who died in Broward County we know for a fact now that she is related to Kamala Harris and I'm going to tell you how we determine that fact it is now undeniable because when Kamala Harris was effectively handed the torch from Biden after they staged an effective coup back in August, CNN couldn't help themselves and immediately ran an article, instantly reminding the world that Kamala's black. She's Jamaican. Instantly, let's blackify her immediately. Here is the article that they ran, um, and it essentially had a title like about her Jamaican roots or whatever, and embedded in the article, it was a man named Sherman Harris. And he was speaking about his second cousin, Kamala. He, I'm just going to read this to you. It says, three and a half years ago, Sherman Harris gathered together a clutch of family and friends at his home on a hilltop here in rural Jamaica to watch his cousin step into history. As Kamala took the oath of office as vice president of the United States, the room erupted in screams and tears, he recalled. Quote, even talking to you now, I feel some sort of tears from my eyes, too, you know? Sherman Harris, 59, said in an interview with CNN, it's like tears of joy. So later throughout that article, he claimed that Oscar Harris, that would be Kamala's grandfather, Donald Harris's father, and his father, Newton Harris, were brothers. So that would make Kamala his second cousin. Okay. Now, if my theory is correct, that would mean that he knew White Iris very well, because we know that White Iris and Oscar Harris were married until death did him part, until he died. Well, guess what we found? That same cousin, cousin Sherman Harris, who was featured in that CNN piece just from August, we were crawling through Facebook, we found his Facebook page, and he posted a sweet tribute to his Aunt Iris, White Iris. It was a Facebook posting of White Iris's obituary, and beneath that obituary posting, he wrote this tribute to her. There it is. You can see the third one down says Sherman Harris. Rip, auntie, you're never forgotten. Lasting mem memories of shared episodes. That is the exact same Sherman Harris pictured in the CNN article. And again, this was posted under the obituary of the Iris Harris that died in Broward County. So this confirms that Iris, the white Iris, is indeed related to Kamala and Donald Harris. If Sherman is telling the truth, this would make Iris her grandmother officially. Kamala Harris must answer for this. She absolutely must answer this. You cannot be posting up pictures of you with a black woman saying that it's your grandma, okay? You cannot do that. And then come to find out there was another woman who you look much more like and we have all of the evidence in the world that she is your true grandmother. That is just, it is too wild. It is just too out of pocket. We are going to need answers to that. Because if, if what Sherman Harris, who was interviewed by CNN, is saying is true, then there is no room here. There's no situation in which Black Barrel, this woman, is her legitimate grandmother. Okay? And by the way, I want to say, just keeping up, looking at this barrel, she in no way favors Donald Harris. Let's get a side by side of, of, of Beryl and Donald Harris. Like, wh what are we even speaking about? If you if you put this together, how are you getting a Beryl from this woman and Oscar Harris? I don't see it now. Again, Jean's. Yeah, but that is, it, 
we can't say she is or not, I think, based on the picture, because when we know genetics, it can be very complex, I think. It can be funny, but then when you put him next to our white iris, I go, okay, look at little squinty eyes here. I could see a, a little bit of a similarity here. He does seem to... I don't know, could be, could be, and could, because, I mean, of the father, Oscar J. Harris, um, I mean, I don't know, could be, could be, more, yeah, I think Somewhat so. favor her, again, now we're just believing our own eyes and asking the right questions, what we do know for a fact is that woman on the right, Iris Harris, is related to Kamala Harris, and we need answers, okay, we need answers. Now, also last week, we left you on a tidbit. We were searching for a Christopher Harris. Do you guys remember that? I'm going to briefly jog your memory here. Uh, Christopher Harris was the, at the time, uh, anonymous person who signed off on Oscar Harris's death certificate. And we were just imagining, okay, we're looking for information on Donald. We know Oscar Harris uh, was married to Iris, Vioris, whatever you want to call her. And I would just imagine that Donald would have been there by his father's side when he died, because when your father dies, you tend to be by their side. Well, I'm gonna pull up that death certificate again. This is, again, Oscar Harris's death certificate, and you can see um, on the bottom there, number 16, if you go right there to the bottom, it says qualification, meaning the person filling this out, the qualification is that he is the son of Oscar Harris. And then it says something about the body being buried and he signed it off. And we were going, okay, who is this Christopher Harris? Like, this would mean that Oscar, that Donald Harris has a brother. This means that this guy would be Kamala's, definitively be Kamala's uncle. Where is he in the world? Where, well, we were able to locate Chris. He was also featured in the Kingston Gleaner. That has given us a lot of information. The uh, newspaper. And an article that was dated back to June 24th, 1983 announcing the Council of Jamaicans in Ontario, Canada. I'm going to show you a picture, okay? These pictures of these people. That one in the middle is Chris Harris. Presumably, that would be Oscar Harris's son that he had with Iris Fioris Harris, okay? It says in the bottom there, the newly formed Council of Jamaicans, and it tells you, again, um, from left to right, that you're looking at a man named Romley Armstrong, and next to him is Bev Hayden, and that person who looks rather fair-skinned in the middle is Chris Harris. I find it rather off-putting that Donald Harris does not mention many of his siblings in his piece about his Jamaican... Yeah, so why would he not mention his brother? Even if this brother was his half-brother, or why would you not mention your family this is where the lie is with the Kamala you know yeah this uh, why would you not mention what 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 is the reason why you would hide this family that's what I want to know I mean it's a part of your history history is history you can't change history hmm. heritage it seems like he's continually leaving out the white people. That just makes me a little bit uncomfortable. I'd almost say it's racist. There's abandoned an entire side of your family. Like, don't you find that quite weird that that piece so much focuses on introducing and discussing everyone who's black, but you leave out your own siblings? We've thus far, by the way, been able to locate two other confirmed siblings. So these would be the siblings of Donald Harris, the children of Oscar Harris, and Iris, our, our white Iris Harris, uh, who died in Broward County. He doesn't mention them. Uh, did, did Kamala have a relationship with them growing up? I don't know. And I want to be clear, we still cannot find much information about Donald Harris himself. We did find some old newspaper clippings of a Donald Harris, which we are working to confirm it's him, that was involved in a lot of plays, in theater, and in drama in Jamaica. And I'm going, okay, well, the piece that I read about him, he was constantly speaking about the farm and the farm and the lessons on the farm, it would be wild if he turned out to be another theater kid. Because you know that I have had my fill 
of theater kids and them being put into positions of power a la President Zelensky, Justin Trudeau, Emmanuel Macron. So I'm really hoping that this is not the right Donald Harris, but again, we're working to confirm it. Still cannot find his birth certificate. I still cannot find really anything else. Yeah, it is um, so odd that his birth certificate cannot be found. But I think one of the Jamaican, I saw a video of a Jamaican who is actually explaining that um, the reason probably to do with, uh, it was after the abolishment of slavery that he, he was born. And maybe that's why he the, there's no records, public records available of him. But yeah, it's a bit odd. That would make him seem legitimate to me. Like, I just, I can't find Donald Harris, but we are still looking, we are still searching, and we're not going to stop. Now, I'm going to take a quick pause here to thank one of our sponsors before we get into this next really interesting tidbit about the Kamala Harris scandal. Really close. Many of you guys pointed out to me that I missed in her obituary, and I did miss this. I don't know how I did, but there were so many pictures of her and her family and so many pictures of Alves and um, his wife of 68 years with Iris. They were extremely tight-knit. That was all very true. And Alves Cambridge uh, passed away in 2020, and in his, ob- in his obituary, There were some things that were of interest and sent me down various rabbit holes, and I'm still collecting that data. But I want to show you his obituary, particularly um, the second page of it, okay? So this is his obituary. It goes on and talks about how he, you know, worked six days a week, opened a hardware store, and worked in Jamaica through two fires that destroyed his business. He persevered and rebuilt to the mantra that you can destroy the tree, but the roots remain untouched. Talked about how him and his wife, Vaughn, loved to travel around the world. Yes. There's a lot of stuff I'd like to speak to you guys about, Vaughn. But first, I want to introduce Alves because, like I said, there's so much information. It's important to slow it down. Look at this this third portion here, okay? Al would want you to know that he was a free Mason and visited many lodges around the world on his travels. He was also president of the Jockey Club for a time, okay? So this means that when this man passed away, he wanted the world to know, this is, again, Iris's brother, Alves, that she came over with on a ship. We found the ship logs, um, I believe it was in uh, 1958. She came over with him on a ship, and they settled in Miami, Dade. And he wanted the world to know, after he passed away, that he was a Freemason and he visited many lodges around the world. Now, this is a great time for us to pause and discuss Freemasonry because there are so many different elements, cultural elements of this, which I think a lot of Americans have the wrong idea. Uh, Either they don't think Freemasonry is real, or they don't believe that Freemasonry is relevant, um, or they believe that Freemasonry is innocent. And I'm going to speak about all those things. So first and foremost, um, what is Freemasonry? Full stop, okay? So during the late Middle Ages, the world was united uh, under the Holy Roman Catholic Church, okay? So if you had any opposition to the church throughout Europe, you were forced to go underground, right? We were a, a, a Christian society. And among the only organized groups that were able to move freely throughout Europe were these guilds of stonemasons, and they would then be there for because they could move freely, hence free masons. They were able to maintain meeting halls or lodges in virtually every major city, and the masons um, were essentially very talented at architecture, and they had a bunch of secret knowledge, uh, sometimes secret knowledge of architecture and of other topics, and that knowledge was dated back to the times um, of... Uh, uh, Egypt, right? And it was essential maintaining this knowledge in the construction of European churches and cathedrals. So one of the things that is well known is that Freemasons were in opposition to the church, right? They wanted to crush the church, which is why it is not ironic that the person who founded the Mormon church, as just one example, many of the churches, the very many Protestant faiths that we have, um, was Joseph Smith, and he was a Freemason. That's a fact, just as one example. Now, you may know some people that are Freemasons, and you're going, well, I know this person, and he goes to a lodge, and he's completely harmless. Yes, it is a known thing that 90 
97, like something like 97% of Freemasons are not in the top tier degree of Freemasonry. And it is understood that at the top tier degree of Freemasonry, uh, you essentially become one of the makers of the world. Now, I remember, and I've spoken about this on this podcast, but one of the things that kind of ripped me into a new reality last year when I was studying with some priests was they sort of looked at me. I was, I was in London at the time, and they just <laughs> said to me in the kindest way possible, you Americans don't know anything about real history. You just you know nothing about your own country. You don't even know that your country was established by Freemasons, right? And it's interesting, of course, that I'm, I'm referring to Catholic priests. I believe a lot of the reasons why people hate Catholicism or hate Catholics is because Catholics know history. <laughs> they have been recording history for a long time. So if you're a Freemason and you're working to rewrite history or you're telling people that America was established because of this or because of that, and they you completely remove the aspects of Freemasonry from our textbooks as they have, then, yeah, you are going to be at conflict with the Catholic Church who remembers everything and keeps, you know, very good records of history. So I'm just, for those of you guys who have never even heard of that, and like I said, I, I would have been among you. I'm very new to relearning American history through the lens of Freemasonry. Um, so- yeah, I've never heard of it. <laughs> that is the first time I'll have to reread that as well. Don't know anything about Freemason. But- Some known Freemasons. George Washington was a Freemason. Thomas Jefferson was a Freemason. Benjamin Franklin was a Freemason. Buzz Aldrin was a Freemason. Don't get me started. For those of you that have listened to this podcast for a long time, you already know where I'm at at where I'm at when it comes to NASA and the weird satanic chants that they were doing to establish the Apollo program and all of the weird stuff that happened leading up to the moon landing. So I freaked out when I learned Buzz Aldrin was a Freemason. It's not helping my case in believing those moon landings. I'll tell you that for free. Franklin Roosevelt was another Freemason. Sigmund Freud, that got me into a lot of trouble this year because I started speaking about Sigmund Freud. He's a member of, of B'nai B'rith, and I was telling you, like this guy who keeps writing about child sex, uh, yeah, there are some things you should know about him. He was a Freemason. Mozart was a Freemason. Okay, so at a... a point in our history and likely even today it was all about a battle for power a battle for dominion over the earth and they had all different sorts of aims and it is true that not as starting to understand why she's been censored actually Candace Owen she knows a lot of stuff Candace you know a lot of stuff (laughs) yep different groups high degree of Freemasons practiced sexual rituals and again, that gets back into the origins of NASA. For those of you that are new to this, you got to go back and watch the NASA episode. Watch the Michael Jackson episode. Watch the NASA origin story. It's shocking. It's all in your face. You can look this up literally on Wikipedia. It's so known. I'm not like on a weird Reddit feed learning this information. Um, they believed that some of these people, and particularly speaking about NASA, you know, that you could perform these sex rituals and have these like group sex settings and you would be able to summon demons and they believed that they would be able to conquer the earth this way. These people who established Apollo thought this. They, these people, I was uh, sharing a story, Alistair Crowley was one of these individuals. He was quite literally kicked out of Italy, Italy, pardon, by Mussolini because he was hosting a sex ritual amongst the powerful elite. That's what I think is the biggest takeaway. The biggest takeaway is that the people that practiced these sexual rites and believed in sex magic and did these things in an effort to conquer the world were elites. This wasn't like a random group of people in the middle of nowhere living in the desert doing this stuff. You know what I mean? Like this was the most powerful people in the world in an effort to believe that they would be able to conquer the nations. It's important to know that to as we continue to discuss everything that's happening because I even had to um, reset my mind as I was looking into Kamala's history and all this weird stuff and I was going, okay, what was the world up to in the 1940s? As just an example, if Donald Harris was born in 1938, what was actually going on in our country? Well, you know, it, we're talking about uh, World War II period, where this stuff was going on, where you had elites that were practicing Thelema. We're talking about when Freemasonry was relevant, where these sorts of individuals who thought like this, um, leading up into the 60s, obviously, free love, sex, rock and roll. Many people don't know the basis of that was Aleister Crowley's religion, Thelema. That was the precursor. It wasn't like a bunch of adults by themselves decided to have multiple partners. It was at a bunch of elites behind closed doors 
doors, it decided to introduce sexual liberation as a means to conquer nations. And it worked. It crushed the church in the process, right? Having multiple partners is, is explicitly anti-Christian, obviously, uh, making people not desire marriage. These are the sorts of things that actually took place in this country. And you can learn all of these things, by the way. I posted my book list um, on Locals.com because people were like, where are you learning all this stuff? I'm like, I just read stuff that are that's outside of a textbook. Um, and, of course, start with that book, Chaos, because the 60s was a very very wild time, people changing their names. Of course, prior to that, you had McCarthyism. In your textbook, you learned that he was just a paranoid guy, paranoid center. It's not true. It was real. Uh, communists were invading America. Um, they were changing their names. They were selling our secrets. And he was brave to fight and stand up and to speak about it. Anyways, like I said, I, I want to just speak about that because when you see Alvis Cambridge openly put something like Freemasonry, I don't think that's a ha-ha joke after you die. He just was like, I'm not going to say this until I die, and then I want you guys to just publicize it. So we have someone who is likely Kamala Harris's great uncle or uncle um, who is explicitly saying that he's a Freemason, and now we have a woman who's about to be president of the United States. How does that make you feel? Like I said, we don't want to overwhelm you guys. Another uh, important part of this process is, is we don't want to make any mistakes by going through all of these documents too quickly because that's what they're waiting on, right? If this, everyone's watching these episodes, they're seeing the numbers, they understand people are processing this. They're waiting, they're waiting for me to make one slip up so they can like pound and be like, she's crazy. So I'm going through everything very slowly and very meticulously. We're investigating every claim that people are making, but until we feel certain that it's correct, we're not presenting it. Tomorrow, we are going to take a closer look, however, at Kamala's alleged mother, Shia Malagoplin. There are some interesting things in her filings, some interesting things about her pursuit. Yeah, it is um, very interesting to know about these history, his historic stuff. Um, and just to gain some sense of what was going on during that time of Kamala's, you know, families are bringing what was going on in the world during that time so if you look at this whole thing you, you really have to put history into context as well and that her explaining that you know the com communist the freemason and all of that tied together into this um, mystery of her father of citizenship, citizenship in America uh, that have come up, and we feel well equipped to discuss those things. I also wanted to tell you guys that are emailing us at info at .com that there are still a few things we're looking for, so if you can find it or you come across it, please send it. One of those things is Donald Jasper Harris, Harris's birth certificate or a yearbook entry. He did list the schools that he went to. Maybe you are someone who attended those schools and you have an old yearbook. I just would like to confirm that his name has always been Donald Jasper Harris because I can't seem to find him. Also, regarding Alvis Cambridge, our Freemason, Iris's brother, we can't locate his birth certificate. We know that he was born in... Yeah, because um, it, it is possible that Donald Harris may have actually taken one of the late uh, son of Aris as when he actually moved to America as if indeed he is a Freemason or communist and from that history because really it's very odd that his actually birth certificate cannot be found. Other people's birth certificates are available and can be confirmed but his is the mystery. So I think the next episode, she's going to look into that as well. Look at the woman that he married, Kamala's mother, who is from India. So he's from India and he, she, um, she's from India. She's also from a very wealthy Indian up in the government level. So according to the history and records from Jamaica. So it is a very interesting um. Uh, story about Kamala Harris and the fact that she actually has left all of that information out and she's going out about and claiming this blackness for political papers and that's why most Americans are upset about it mostly black Americans um, 
that's going to be a very big problem for her moving to November. I can see that. I can see that mainstream media are, are saying that, oh, yeah, she's leading. But Hillary Clinton was leading too, remember? Yeah. And there's a lot of, of stuff that's coming out from Kamala that looks more um, that she's actually not even competent because she's been putting out her DEI as the thing that people should know about instead of her achievement, her competency, what she's going to do as a president. The more, the more and more she does this interview, the more and more you, you really can sense that Oh, she's just regurgitating the same concept, the same line, mostly rehashed and mostly not really answering the questions that people want to know about, which is very clear when you actually look at these clips that, wait a minute, this woman is going to be the American president and she has this paternal history that's very unknown that now when Candace Owen look into it, it's a little bit more. Remember Candace Owen in America, she's very famous in America. People listen to Candace Owen. Black people listen to Candace Owen. So whatever she says, whatever have you, potentially a lot of people would actually listen. But, you know, not, not even people. Mostly people are conservatives, uh, but... I've seen a lot of clips, even people who are not conservative actually quoting her looking into this issue because there's a lot of gaps. Suddenly she is black. She was Indian before. Donald Trump said, she said she does, you know, he, she, he didn't know that Kamala was black. She, he's, she's suddenly black. So because the media uh, will continue to perpetuate this lie that she's black, so people have to look and see, is, is she really true black? Is she really true black? So far, there's no evidence that she's truly black. There's a lot of things being uncovered that are actually mostly concerning now for her campaign. And that is actually relating to her identity, a paternal identity that she claims that that's, no, that she's black from that, from that side of her family. And when you look at that family, her father's family, the Irish family, why is she not talking about that family? Is she, yeah, is she hiding that family? What is, what are American going to know? What is it that she's hiding? And I think what she's hiding, the, um, the corporate media knows. They know exactly what she's hiding. They absolutely know it. <laughs> because they've already decided that she must win. So they can pick, that's what media works. They pick the side and uh, if you are favoured, you would do well. If you are not favoured, unfortunately, you're not going to do well. The propaganda machine is going to be against you all the time. And yeah, you can see that, you can see that. Okay, so thank you guys for listening and yeah, I'll post another video about this because I think it highlights a very important issue about when you apply for a job and when you are in your workplace, what is more important is your competency and you should actually reject the idea that you're black what, you're black what, black surgeon, black nonsense. You are a surgeon, okay? If you're a surgeon, you're a surgeon. If you are a therapist, you're a therapist. You're not a black therapist, okay? So your skills should be the number one thing, not that you are your identity type that's going on. This is a political, but it goes back to the workplace. It does go, go back to the workplace, okay? So, because we leave people who come from the, you know, from the people who actually engage in a political process are people who come from the society. If the society thinks everything is black and white, they're gonna evaluate everything from that black and white or they think everything is from the identity type of policy, of politics, of identity, they will look at everything from that identity side. 
and and I think um, we've had enough of that. So it's time that people look into this and review their strategy around this. I personally hate it. <laughs> I do. Um, you know, I hate it. You know, it's your, it's who you are, and when you go to a job, you are not elected there as a DEI hire. You are elected there as your with your competency. Okay, it doesn't matter which DEI you're talking about. It should be the number one thing. It should be working in that uh, profession you're in based on your skills, not on that is your first word okay so i uh, i'm gonna stop it here and thank you guys for listening until next time have a lovely day bye for now